Ten years ago, I was disqualified from the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition on account of being too old. This is the year I make my triumphant return. With more than 4,000 entries from all across the globe, the competition is fierce. Tonight, I'm going to be traveling to the edge of a volcano off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean in my first adventure of this series. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. The goal is to take a picture that's worthy of being shortlisted in the Astronomy Photographer of the Year 2024 categories, and that's not easy. So in order to increase our chances, we need to leave the light pollution of our city and travel to the edge of a volcano off the coast of the Atlantic. Where better to kickstart our adventure than beneath the clearest skies on Earth? It smells nice, doesn't it? Okay, so we are now stepping outside for the first time on this entire trip. This will be Izzy's first ever time in completely crystal clear dark skies. Okay, so I've just changed the ISO to get all the stars in and bugger me, there are loads. The common issue with stargazing in a location this remote is that you'll really struggle to find anywhere to stay. Thankfully, there is a hotel here, 2,000 meters above sea level, and given that my primary objective is to capture the night sky, it makes sense that I book a room that allows me to do so from the comfort of my own balcony. Well, technically two balconies, which is even cooler. Before embarking on this trip, I realized I needed a lighter and more portable setup to take with me. I get very nervous at the mere thought of my telescope being transported in the hold luggage, which is why I reached out to ZWO, one of the world's leading astrophotography manufacturers, and asked for their help with creating a super powerful and portable all-in-one setup that I could take with me on the plane. Me and Iz had booked two nights at this hotel and one down by the beach, which meant our time for observing during this adventure was going to be severely limited. We unpacked my new equipment and got straight to work. I think the behind the scenes footage speaks for itself in terms of how incredible this location is. Being in this environment feels like a cheat code in stargazing, which is an odd thing to say because there's nothing that's enhancing your experience. In fact, it's the absence of anything that makes it so special. But now in Border One Skies, I aim to capture my targets in their purest unfiltered forms. Target number one, the Andromeda Galaxy. Target number two, the Triangulum Galaxy. Target number three, the Seven Sisters. Now that is beautiful, hands down the best image I've ever captured of the Pleiades star cluster. The Seven Sisters are a target I've long been fascinated with, largely down to the fact that they are so easily visible to the naked eye. But as though it couldn't get any better, my last image of the night was of the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae. These images were all captured with less than an hour's worth of exposures. If I wanted to replicate a similar level of image quality back home from my light polluted garden, each of them would require at least 10 hours of images due to the severe light pollution. Here, on the edge of the volcano, there's more than 300 clear nights a year. Whereas back home in Leicester, we're lucky to get 50. Let me know in the comments which of these was your favourite. One of the biggest modern misconceptions about astrophotography is that you must have a telescope to image the night sky. That is fundamentally false. Tonight, we're going to take complete advantage of this by utilizing the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra's array of lenses to take multiple long exposure images of our nearest galactic neighbor. So if you look outwards, you can see a lot of stars. So I'm going to move past my telescope so it's set up on the ledge just there. So it is very cold, which is why I'm wrapped up very warm, but I'm still quite chilly. So I'm going to get my hand warmers out in a minute. Yeah, I'm controlling all of my telescopes right now from my smartphone, but I'm actually about to do something that will give up my usage of those telescopes because I'm now going to mount my smartphone on top of this telescope. So if you look just here, so there 
is a phone holder mount. So this is the way that I'm actually going to maximize the capabilities of the S24 Ultra, is I'm going to use a tracking mount so it can take a longer exposure image of the night sky. So yeah, let's get the phone mounted on top of the telescope and see how it does. By using the five times zoom, we are just about getting the whole of the constellation of Orion in our shot, which is really cool as it means we are likely to capture multiple deep sky objects. This is what we can see when taking sequential 30 second long exposures. Incredibly, we can very clearly and distinctly make out the Orion Nebula in all of these shots. That is an image of the Orion Nebula captured on the S24 Ultra. But the target that I'm really obsessed with capturing with my Samsung Galaxy phone is the Andromeda Galaxy, the galaxy next door. Yeah, I think I'm quietly impressed with the results. It is possible to capture our cosmos on a smartphone. Now, isn't that the craziest thing imaginable? We keep it in our pocket with us for the majority of every single day of our living lives. And if we want to, we can pull it out and capture things that are literally out of this world. So for me, this is very impressive. Me and Iz spent the next day at the beach, drank a lot of Capri Suns, got a little sunburnt, watched the sunset, and then headed home which then concluded our first adventure of the series. And these are the images I captured. Not a bad start by any means, but I'm very confident I can do better. I've decided to print off the photos and I'm gonna stick them on these whiteboards throughout the rest of the series as a way to record all of the entries I've made. And then lastly, we have a picture I took of our moon. I took this last night as I was testing out my C11 telescope. So there we go, we have five entries on our boards and already they're starting to look quite full. By the time we reach the final episode, I'm hoping we'll have a good selection of images on this board that we can narrow down to just 10 of the best. Next time on Astronomical, I travel to the land of fire and ice as I ignore TLC's advice and I do go chasing waterfalls in search of my first real experience of the elusive Northern Lights. Thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed. I hope to see you again next week. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. You're probably thinking, if you were disqualified, then why did you attend the award ceremony? Wait a minute, why are you front and center in the photo for the winners of that year's competition?